Hey, I'm Ian with Moto IQ, and this is our latest project, the 2002 Subaru Impreza WRX. I bought this car brand new back in 2002 because I used to heavily follow WRC and was super excited when Japan announced they were bringing a US model to the WRX to the States. I've had this car for about 16 and a half years and it's been a lot of fun, but the last four to six years, it's been pretty neglected, as you can see. I was gonna buy a new modern car, but since I started working at Moto IQ, the guys here convinced me to breathe some new life into this car. The ultimate goal for this is to make a fully competent track car, but that's still comfortable enough for me to drive on the weekends. Today, we'll be upgrading our braking power with help from our friends over at TopTech. So let's get this thing in the garage so Mike Kojima and I can go into more detail about what we did. So I'm in the garage now with Mike Kojima, and we're gonna talk about the first thing, which is really obvious. I put on a set of big brakes from StopTech, specifically the ST40 kit. The rotors are 328 by 28, which is much bigger than stock. What StopTech tries to do is uh, maintain the stock hydraulic proportioning. So they, they look at the stock piston area in the stock caliper, and then they duplicate it in the four piston caliper. They make like 30 something different piston sizes, I think in like one millimeter increment. That's where like a lot of the aftermarket falls short. Like they might have a choice of three different piston sizes, uh, but, but StopTech can precisely duplicate the stock uh, proportioning that way. So you keep on having a good hard pedal, no mushy pedal, and you don't have uh, too much front or rear brake bias that way. The brakes are a two-piece um, rotor, so it has a uh, alloy center hat, which saves a lot of weight over the uh, stock one-piece cast iron center. And uh, it has an iron friction ring, and the iron friction ring floats on the aluminum rotor. So what that what floating means is it has like about 12 to 15 pounds of free movement back and forth. And uh, you know, like a stock one-piece rotor, like when you use the brakes a lot, especially on the track and the rotor gets really hot, the uh, being attached to the um, center, center hat part uh, actually causes the rotor to warp in like a cone shape. So when you hit the brakes, the pads want to strain that cone out and the, and the pads are only making partial contacts, so your pedal gets longer and mushier. Um, when the uh, rotor is allowed to float, it, it doesn't distort like a cone, it just like grows and expands and contracts. Um, the other cool thing about having a floating rotor is if you have any kind of play in your bearing system or um, you know, the rotor develops a little bit of a warp, uh, it, it'll, it'll float and not, not necessarily knock the uh, pads and the pistons back to the caliper so you won't have like pad knock back and a real long mushy pedal all, all of a sudden when you're not expecting it. So uh, the float is a pretty cool thing. And the nice trick that StopTech does, you know if your rotor is floating, right, it would like rattle and make a chinging noise when you're driving around on the street. And for a race car, nobody cares, right, because it's a race car, but for a street car, having that noise can be like annoying. So StopTech has a conical Inconel washer that uh, puts some spring tension on the uh, friction rings so it doesn't just freely rattle back and forth. The caliper has like this um, aluminum bridge that bolts in, you know, like where you take the pads out. Most calipers, that area is totally open, right? You just lift the pads out. But when you apply hydraulic force with the pistons, the caliper wants to spread and flex and that can cause differ differential pad wear and also can cause like a longer, mushier uh, pedal. So StopTech actually has like a, a forged aluminum piece that bolts in there with Allen bolts and that really keeps the caliper stiff and from spreading. The uh, rotors are uh, zinc plated, uh, like electro plated. That prevents rust, right? Yeah, and uh, you know like, um, a lot of rotors that don't have that, you wash your wheels and then like rusty water is dripping out of your rotor for the, like the next you know, few minutes and it turns. Yeah, That's it pretty much off. how my last brake setup was. Yeah. yeah, you know that looks nasty, right? Yeah. But if you have the zinc plating and all there, the rusty water doesn't pour out and then you know, parts where the pads don't wear like here and here don't turn all brown and gross. Uh, I mean, the only thing that's uh, about the sink is when you put the new brake system together, you have to kind of drive carefully for the first few miles to burn that sink off before you actually bed the pads. 
I mean, you probably know this, that, right? Yeah, well, I talked to the guys at StopTech, and they told me before I even start the betting process, I just need to basically drive with the brake lightly on just to get rid of that coating before I could really start betting the brakes in. And uh, you have a grooved rotor, and what the grooves do is when you're braking hard, uh, you, everything gets so hot that the brake pad material actually can vaporize, and um, that vaporized layer can actually act like a lubricant between the pad and the rotor, and you know that's a form of fade. You're talking about the slots, right? Yeah. So the grooves like help evacuate that uh, vaporized pad layer, so your pads have more bite. Um, so that's kind of like a functional thing too. And if you're driving in the rain, like it helps water get evacuated between the pads and the, and the rotor too. And then that actually has a effect on initial bite and uh, pedal feel. So another cool feature. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to try and see how fast I can actually stop on this thing. Now you know more about your brakes than you probably even cared about. <laughs> <laughs> Should we test the brakes? Yeah, why not? Let's give it a shot. Let me brace myself. Alright, 60. Oh man, that is smooth. That's pretty amazing. Let's do it again. Let's do it. Come to a complete stop. Alright, 70 to zero. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, the ABS is working perfectly. You can feel all, all four wheels are working equally. A lot of times with big brake kits, it's way too front biased. You can feel the ABS only working on the front wheels. Yeah. But in this case, you can feel all four wheels. I've never heard my ABS pump before. Is that normal? Yeah, totally normal. That's that's pretty weird that you haven't heard that before, but... Maybe I've never emergency stopped like that. Man, we're really stopping hard, too. Like, I gotta brace myself. <laughs> maybe next on the list are seats. Seats and maybe harnesses. Yeah. But then you need a roll cage, and then, uh, yeah, it stops me in the streetcar so much. So, well, thanks so much for your help. It was really cool. This car is well on its way to being really awesome. Pretty excited to see what else we have in store for this. Yep. Until next time, check out Moto IQ on YouTube and check out MotoIQ.com to read more about the stuff we do. Peace.